Okay, the second video on uh, growth control, we focus on growth factors. And from growth hormone, the growth hormone is not the only hormone to control growth. Uh, as a matter of fact, more importantly, we have these growth factors to control growth. So what does growth hormone do? Growth hormone will go to the liver to stimulate IGF. So IGF is known as somatomedium. medium. The mediating factors, mediating the effects of growth hormone. So growth hormone from the pituitary gland will go to the liver to produce IGFs. So IGFs are insulin-like growth factors. Uh, this topic, today in this video, we talk about uh, growth hormone uh, uh, stimulating IGFs, but this is not the end of the story. There are different uh, somatom Eden hypothesis. So later on, we also figure out that, like for example, bone cells, like tubule cells, it would also produce its own IGF and would have autocline and procline function. And more and more, now the somatomedian hypothesis is that the pituitary gland would produce growth hormone and the liver produce IGF, and then other nutrients, other factors in the bone will produce this IGF as well. And then, so it's independent of growth hormone stimulation. So, in other words, IGF is, has become a more important factor. But let's take a look of IGF. There are actually two IGF, IGF-1 and IGF-2. Remember, when we talk about insulin, we have insulin, insulin-like growth factor 1 and insulin-like growth factor 2. They all belong to the same family with this long peptide, with the signal peptide, B chain, connecting chain, A chain, B chain, and E chain. They do have in common is that all the E peptides are removed. So the mature protein come into insulin consists of only A chain and B chain. The connecting peptide is gone. Okay? And then for uh, IGF1 and IGF2, the E domain is gone and then the, the, the uh, cytopeptides are gone but the BCAD domain remain intact with three disulfide loops. So structurally, IGF-1 and 2 are quite similar. But huh, they do have very different receptors. Uh, the most uh, well-studied receptors, of course, is insulin. But then for IGF-1 and 2, they have two different kinds of receptors. IGF-1 receptors, IGF-2 receptors because IGF-1 and 2 are so similar so IGF-1 may to a certain extent also act on IGF-2 receptors interestingly IGF-2 receptor is found to be related to another kind of receptor known as metal 6 phosphate receptor they would engulf the growth factor E same thing is true the metal 6 phosphate receptor and go for a magic phosphate. And this one is for the appearance of IGF-2. IGF-1 is for somatic growth and it will stimulate mainly this IGF-1 receptor. Bring about those uh, kinesing effects and so on. IGF-2 to a certain extent also bind to IGF-1 receptor. Why do we need two IGFs? With Think about different possibilities. In mammals and in humans, uh, IGF-2 is mainly for, so for fetal growth or for the babies. And then IGF-1 is mainly for adults. But for other long mammalian species, both IGF-1 and IGF-2 are being used. Okay, so uh, yeah, so in this case here, we also have to consider the binding proteins. Similar to a growth hormone binding protein, a growth hormone with a growth hormone binding protein. IGFs would have at least six being identified binding protein in the bloodstream. So the functions of these IGF binding proteins, they are for protection, delivery, and also clearance of IGF-1. Now they are rather complicated. I do not intend to cover all the details of these interactions. 
uh, in this course because that would be beyond the scope of uh, molecular endocrinology or beyond the scope of, uh, of uh, hormones and you can see that involve many what we call proteases to clip off this uh, binding protein to facilitate better binding of the growth factor onto its receptors. There are also binding protein receptors found on the membrane. So the picture is rather complicated. So to sum up, we have IGF-1 and 2. Uh, they have different receptors. IGF-1 receptors for growth stimulation. IGF-2 receptor mainly for clearance of IGF-2. IGF-1 mainly bind to IGF-1 receptor. These growth factors also have, or mainly IGF-1 receptor mainly have uh, different kinds of binding protein in the serum to regulate the functions, appearance, or metabolism of these uh, factors. As I said, the growth hormone will go to the liver to stimulate IGF-1, and mainly for adults and IGF-2 in fetus. So IGF-1 will go into different tissues like fat tissues to facilitate, and IGF-1 will stimulate lipogenesis, interestingly, but the direct action of growth hormone on fat tissues is to stimulate uh, lipolysis, to degrade uh, uh, lipid, okay? But IGF-1 on its own will stimulate fat cells to grow for lipogenesis. And IGF-1 would go to a chondrocyte, that is to say the cartilage, you know, in the bone we have, on soft tissues, cartilage will be formed as well, and that by and large uh, controlled by the chondrocytes, and also in the protein thesis in the muscle, to build up on muscles. So we already discussed that there will be autocrine production of IGFs, so the liver will stimulate regeneration of the liver, and then the IGF will stimulate regeneration of production of, uh, of uh, fat cells, chondrocytes, and also muscles. And then the negative feedback loop going back to the hypothalamus to stop the production of uh, GHRH, thereby stopping a growth hormone. Another factor is called somatostatin. They will fine tune the production of uh, uh, pituitary gland divided the growth hormone. Growth hormone also go beyond the liver and IGFs. So it will stimulate carbohydrate metabolism and fat cells for lipolysis and then glucose. And in other words, in general, we have what we call diabetogenic activity leading to higher blood glucose level, okay? So that's the actions of growth hormone. Let's come back to IGFs. Oh, in other words, uh, we have this anti-insulin uh, effects as well with, uh, with the growth hormone. And then that with the glucose, uh, uh, the growth hormone trying to uh, hunger at the effects of uh, insulin because the insulin is to bring glucose back in into our tissues, okay, so growth hormone also will have anti-insulin effects. Uh, excellence of IGF, so IGF will stimulate uh, IGF-2, I mean growth hormone will stimulate IGF-2 in the fetus, and then IGF-1 for postnatal growth. They have both autocrine and paracrine function for more growth, uh, target tissue expressing the receptors, so the receptors are in bone cells, uh, chondrocytes, uh, muscle cells, and so on. So IGFs also have metabolic function, leading to cellular proliferation and also differential function. Now these two are very uh, important concepts or contradicting concepts. Growth means growth promotion, means non-stop growth, or growing with proliferation. Proliferation in Chinese term like zhang uh, sang, so a uh, tumor is related to uncontrolled cell growth. Many IGFs are relating to uh, glioma or different uh, types of tumor in the brain. And then differentiation is another thing. Differentiation not necessarily mean growth. Differentiation means that uh, our cell types would be differentiated in the different cell types. Okay? IGF-2 binds insulin receptor as well actually is uh, stronger on IGF-1 and IGF-2R. IGF-2 receptor, OK? 
can remove IGF-2, but does not mean a cellular function. So that is pretty much confirmed. So interestingly, IGF-2 uh, binds an uh, insulin receptor as well. Uh, a much uh, area of the research is required to, to understand about the function of IGF-2 on insulin receptor. The IGF binding proteins are protecting or delivery of IGF to target cells. Uh, what we can say is that they modulate the action of the IGF by inhibiting its binding to the receptor. In other words, to control or fine tuning the release of IGF onto this receptor. So, under the control of those endoproteases, which would remove the binding proteins, the IGF binding protein may bind to its own receptor to inhibit growth. So we cannot afford to have uncontrolled growth because that would cause cancer or tumor. The signaling pathway for IGF-1 now has been well known. On the left hand side, it will stimulate many different oncogenes like RAF signaling pathway, MAP kinase, ERT-1 and 2. This will stimulate proliferation or inhibit apoptosis. And then on the right hand side, we have the uh, PI3 kinase pathway leading to phospholipid 5 phosphatase, and that would cause the phosphorylations of this different pathway leading to differentiation, uh, glucose uptake in group 4, protein synthesis, proliferations, and so on, including uh, PCL2 and, uh, and bad protein from the mitochondria. There are also many different kinases uh, involved. So let's come to this part, uh, try to bring them together. The video is a little bit long, but we have to appreciate and understand cell growth by first understanding cell cycle control. Cell cycle control is uh, drawn in this uh, diagram here. G1 go into G0 phase. If you need to have cell division, the RAS oncogene will be here to go into this pathway to turn on cyclin D and E. Now, IGF and also EGF, epidemic growth factor, actually come in here to stimulate. Okay, so G1 checkpoint is here, and then cyclin kinase inhibitor would inhibit this, but IGF will stimulate into this pathway. And then we have our DGF beta would inhibit this inhibitor. So therefore, we go into this uh, cyclin E, A, uh, and then uh, move into DNA synthesis, or so S phase. At the end, we go to the G2 phase, and then into mitosis. And here, this step, we call this a G2 phase. And then the G2 phase will be controlled by P21, P19, and P53. We call them cyclin kinase inhibitor. That would inhibit them. And in here, you can see that the function of IGF and EGF are to initiate the uh, CMAKE and RAS pathway. And from G1, move into cell division. It's like the major job of IGF. For the comparison of these different uh, growth factors, including growth hormone, lactin, insulin, IGF-1, EGF, and also TGF, they have different receptor types. Uh, we usually call the growth hormone and prolactin the, the cytokine receptor type, and then the insulin with those uh, thyrosine kinase type. These are the signaling pathway, both growth hormone and prolactin. We have the JK. SDAT pathway, and then the insulin, IGF-1, uh, these are all thyrosine kinase, would have uh, caused the kinase in pathway of IRS and PI3, and then uh, EGF would also sometimes stimulate SDAT, and then TGF would stimulate another kind of serine pathway called SMADS, S-M-A-D-S, through the serine therine kinase. And this is one of the example of this mat come from this funny name from the solvular MAD bonders against uh, decap and uh, the legend that is the uh, the tenth uh, next okay that's the next there's a kind of mutation 
of the solving, uh, first found in DPP or LD capital project, uh, the software homolog of uh, TGF beta. So in other words, TGF beta we control uh, the uh, links in uh, the software. So TGF actually, uh, let me yeah, take a look at this on the left hand side. So for these uh, receptors, uh, they will turn on these uh, different pathways. So this SM86 and 7 actually is uh, from these genes here under the control of these uh, receptors. Okay? And now on the right hand side, the lichen will turn on the receptors. So this uh, TGF or transforming factor it will stimulate the formation of these different SMAD factors and then at the end that would activate uh, transforming or differentiation okay so you can see that for example uh, forming of legs or limbs or different kind of appendages in our body requiring all those uh, tra transforming uh, factors all right so here's the MCQ. Uh, which one of the following statements is a correct description of IGF? IGFs are induced by both of them. IGF1 is induced fetus. IGF2 is induced in the liver. Receptors for IGF1 and 2 have similar structure. IGFs and insulin consist of B chain and A chain as their mature hormone in circulation. So you probably need to refer back to the previous videos that IGFs are induced by growth hormone for sure. Okay? IGF1 is in adult, IGF2 is in the fetus. So B and C are incorrect. Receptors for IGF1 and 2 are very different despite IGF1 and 2 are very similar. But their receptors are very different in structure. IGFs and insulin they have B chain and A chain, but insulin has the B chain and A chain, the C peptide removed, but IGF maintain the C peptide and also the B peptide, only with the E peptide removed. So this is also incorrect. Now we come back to growth control with this video. Uh, what causes the dwarfism? Uh, or dwarfism and sort uh, two, or short limbs, or those are people with, uh, you know, not enough uh, in body height, and sometimes in some uh, phenotype we have uh, a chondroplasia, a chondroplasia, and these are different complicated things. Sometimes could be related to metabolic problem or malnutrition and sometimes could be related to genetic causes or genetic diseases lack of growth hormone or lack of secretion of growth hormone some are also relating to psychological stress some are related to thyroid with this case we call hypopituitarism and pretinism not enough thyroid hormone and basically the whole pituitary gland being depressed so therefore it's what we call hypo Pituitism and not enough uh, pituitary hormones. Okay, they usually would have this uh, pretense, uh, meaning that they have uh, mental retardation. Uh, in some cases, so growth hormone replacement therapy could be used. Uh, I have another slide here showing you. You would like to look into my model problem, and that some uh, patients they. Uh, lagging behind in normal trend of body growth against their age and they may treat with uh, growth hormone or recumbent growth hormone and then uh, that will stimulate growth okay and what else can we learn from this uh, pituitary problem there are different types another type is called acorn or achondroplastic achondroplastic problem they usually have very short limbs especially short legs and they are found with a genetic mutation in the fibroblast growth factor receptor free. Okay, you may take into this by the YouTube's, and uh, you can find these uh, patients. They have other body parts normal, just that they have very short legs, so they could move like this. Okay.
okay? And there's an, on the right hand side there are pituitary drop is a lack of growth form or growth form of diffusions. Usually they are very low blood sugar, very low IGF levels and perhaps a growth hormone treatment would be helpful and you may click into this YouTube to learn more how to treat this patient. And finally, uh, we have to compare another case known as gigantism. Now, gigantism is just the reverse that they have perhaps too much growth hormone. Or you can see this is normal body height. This is uh, uh, gigantism. There's another case you may compare with gigantism and aromagnet. Gigantism is abnormal outgrowth or overgrowth with extra height. You can see the legs, the limbs are very long, usually caused by excessive growth hormone secretion before puberty. There are also X-linked aprogigantism, a childhood onset of gigantism. There are also uh, GRP-101 gene duplication leading to growth hormone releasing hormone overexpression in hypothalamus, some with hypopituitarism because of the high level of this is the feedback mechanism, but then the growth hormone uh, 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 growth hormone uh, secretion is huge, so these are going in, uh, in gigantism, are quite common in, uh, in, uh, in the world. Another case is what we call aromagnet, they are not gigantism, but they do have very high levels of uh, growth hormone, extra growth hormone and also extra IGFs. Now, they have longer limbs, and also pronatism. Pronatism means that their nose, you can see that the nose become huge and larger. Okay, they usually happen in middle-aged adults. Okay, so uh, caused mainly by benign growth hormone secreting pituitary adenoma, meaning that the pituitary gland has tumor. And many different kinds of uh, subtypes of the, uh, genetic mutation like uh, FIPA, familiar isolated pituitary adenoma. Okay, for those patients, the uh, uh, treatment would be ultimately uh, removing some of the tumor in the pituitary gland, but that would be a very risky uh, surgery. Okay? So that's the type of difference between uh, agromagnet, bronechism, and also gigantism. Okay, this is uh, excessive amount of growth hormone. This MCQ again, uh, agromagnet is characterized by A, increased growth hormone secretion before puberty, B, increased risk of myocardial infection, hypertension, and stroke, C, Increased IGF-2 levels and normal IGF-1 level. D. Pronatism and cross phases in adults. E. Gigantism. So the uh, simple answer simply is of course D, right? Because acromagnate uh, uh, increased GH secretion not before puberty but usually in uh, middle age. Uh, they may have increase of myocardial infection, uh, but not much that serious comparing with uh, gigantism. Gigantism, do, they, they do have this kind of problem of myocardial infection, meaning that they have a heart problem, a heart muscle problem, hypertension and stroke. IGF-2 is in fetus, so uh, extra growth hormone means <coughs> extra IGF-1 level not normal IGF-1 level, so C is incorrect. So D is correct, so abomagnet is characterized by pronatism and false spaces in adults, and abomagnet is not gigantism. Okay. Um, so that's about to finish. Uh, growth hormone, growth factors, uh, polypeptide hormone, they have different receptors and cellular serine pathway bubbling the control of somatic body growth. Growth factors control cell growth and differentiation and specific serine pathway target genes in various tissues. Uh, IGF is to turn on the uh, cell cycle to go into cell division. Uh, this polypeptide factor of growth promotion effects Alvin adults should not use them as they pose risk on tumor 
of motion. Okay, with this uh, we finished. There are also some uh, revision exercises. You may like to discuss the physiological significance of IGF binding proteins, discuss that those youngsters sleep late at night at worse performance in school than those who sleep early at night. And you may explain how this would be related to obese children and also academic performance. Okay, just for uh, your own interest. And also ghrelin is a hormone to tell body to eat. And uh, this is also one of the uh, assignments that you are required to do. Write a short essay on fasting, eating, growing, and growth hormone. Because this growing and napkin both uh, promote growth hormone. But they have contact acting effects of fitting behavior. Okay? And then uh, we have done also the comparison of gigantism and agromagony. And there are many different types of gigantisms or uh, elongated body shapes and uh, there are different genetic subtypes and then you may like to uh, compare and conscious of those uh, different subtypes okay for, with that I'll stop here and thank you very much for watching bye bye